So this is a cold and dark start on a flight factor A320. This is an awesome aircraft if you don't have it. I highly recommend it. Let's jump into the cockpit. First thing we need to do is look up at the roof. Now you could use the ground supply, but we're just going to use the battery. The plane's completely cold and dark, so we're hitting battery one. This light comes on with off, click that, and it will go away. Go down, it has a master switch, click that. Wait about four seconds, and then click start. Now you've done that, go up to the very top left. There's three switches here, switch all of them to nav. One, two, three. Now because we're doing battery, this takes a lot longer to start up. You'll see that there's a countdown. While we're waiting for the countdown, we're going to go over here and put on some lights. We can put this one on, this one on, this one on, and this one on. They're mostly all the exterior lights. These are internal lights for the passengers, seat belts, smoking. This is internal light inside the cockpit. So now we've done all that. As soon as this avail switch comes on, up the very top, you can now see that there's an off switch for all the fuel pumps. We need to click all of them. So off, 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 off and off. Wait a few seconds and then go down. There is a button here for APU bleed. You're clicking APU bleed. That should say on. We've completed all that. We've done most of the things we need to do up there. Plane is still starting up, but we now have the FMC. So click on the very top right button first. And then go down here and put in your current airport. So this is Nice LFMN slash, and we're just going to fly back to LFMN. And then click in the top right, and then click return. You'll notice it's now entered. Once you've done that, you can then click on align IRS. We're going to click that. And it should say here, IRS in the line in two minutes. So we've got a couple of minutes away before we can take off. Um, just some other things to check. Down here in the middle is the two switches for the engines. We want to switch this over to ignition start. We'll just have a quick look outside. So at the moment, you'll notice that both engines are completely stationary, but not moving. We'll jump back in the plane. While we're waiting for this IRS, we can now consider starting the engines. So we're going to hit this switch here to up. Now, what you're looking for is on here, you're looking for this number to start turning. As long as this number starts turning, it's looking good. But if you follow these steps in order, you should be able to get this plane in the air relatively quickly. Now, this is not a guide on how to do it with a real life plane. This is just for someone who wants to have some fun and get in the air. So we're going to put on engine two. And you'll notice in a few seconds, this will start moving and it's now moving. So this is engine two. Now, one thing to be aware of is where the parking brake is. The parking brake is located down the bottom here. Two things to note. By default, X-Plane doesn't have a button for brake. It just has V for brake, which is put on the parking brake or not. But you can, under settings, change it so that you can have B, so that you can just brake softly. And that would be really useful. The second thing is just make sure you've got a button allocated for reverses. Um, I'm going to put the plane into reverse. You're pushing that button at this point. 
Now, we're going to turn the handbrake off. You notice now we've got an image. Just have one last look up the top. Just that last switch there. And it's now all gone. So there's no warnings on our display. We probably don't need to do a lot of backup, but we'll just do it anyway. We'll have a quick look. We can do a backup. You'll know your plane is able to back up when you've got V's out. Now just be aware, you may find you need to use quite a lot of thrust. So if the plane's not moving, keep moving the dial up a little bit more. You're just nose wheeling. So you'll notice the nose wheel's turning. We just nose wheel it backwards. Have a quick look around. Now while traffic is on, and you can see there's another plane there, but there's not many aircraft. I've kept it relatively low because we don't want to be stuck in a traffic jam. So once you've got your plane around, you can switch to forward mode. So you're pushing the reverses button again, which should toggle back to forward. Now I've got world traffic on, so I can ask for a flight clearance if I wanted. We don't have a lot of planes, so we're just going to bring her up onto the runway. And come to a stop. Approaching zero four left. So I'm just using my brake button, I'm not using the V button. On runway. Okay, so now you can see we're on the runway and we're lined up. We've got one aircraft there in front of us. I think it's going to go over to the other runway, so it's going to make it clear for us. Just come to a full stop. Okay, so just a final check. Once you're going to this point, you have the parking brake off. I recommend just putting flaps to one. Um, if anyone has any further comments on what the flap shooting should be for the A320 on takeoff, please feel free to leave them. But for the moment, we're just going to put it on flaps one, and then we're going to start the engines. Now, we just put the engines to about 10%. We make sure we can see it's moving, there's no warnings, and then we put it all away. Now this is a relatively short runway. The takeoff speed should be just past 140, so between 140 and 160 is where you want to be taking off, and you're looking down here for that speed. So we're, we're going along, we've got 140, and we're almost at 160, so we're going to rotate. We pull back gently on the stick. We can push G to bring in the gears. Have a quick look outside. We can see the gears going in. Just go back into the cockpit. And we are airborne. So that's a cold and dark start from the Flight Factor A320. Thank you for watching. And I hope this helps some people um, out. I really do because a lot of people are indicating this is a very hard plane to fly and I really recommend you don't get too intimidated. Just jump in and give it a go because you're certainly going to be able to get into the sky and then you can move on to some of the more advanced features of this aircraft and actually starting to understand them. But this is just a quick guide so that you can understand how to get into the sky.